Hello, Arizona. We love being in Arizona. We've been here all day and all night. It is great to be in the great state of Arizona with thousands of hardworking and beautiful American patriots. Thank you very much. In just 18 days, the people of Arizona are going to send Martha McSally, a great woman. I will tell you, I know her well. She's a great woman to the United States. And remember, to early voting in Arizona is underway right now. So if anybody would like to leave and go out and vote, I don't mind at all. I see all those beautiful red hats and some white ones, right? And some white ones. The white ones are very nice. They're getting swamped by the red. Make America great again. You know that. But what's the new name? Right? What's the new? Go ahead. In about, what do you think, another 12 months? We could almost do it sooner. Right? What does it say? Keep America great. Keep America great. Right? We got to get used to that because there's something about that. Make America great again. It just worked. But keep America great is very important because it's true. Because everything we do, they can destroy very quickly if the wrong people get into office. And this is an incredible time for our nation. The unemployment rate just fell to the lowest level in over 50 years. More Americans are working today than at any point in the history of our country. Think of it. That's a big number. That's a big stat. Think of that. Today, more Americans, think of that. More Americans are working than ever in the history of our country. Today, right now, nice. Nice. And here in Arizona, manufacturing jobs are surging at the fastest rate in more than two decades. Remember, you weren't going to have any manufacturing jobs anymore, right? I said, you mean we're not going to make things anymore? 600,000 new manufacturing jobs. We're taking care of our veterans and our military will soon be more powerful than it has ever been before. Under Republican leadership, America is booming, America is thriving, and America is winning because we are finally putting America first. Just last week, we achieved another historic victory for the American people. In a beautiful ceremony at the White House, we proudly swore in the newest member of the United States Supreme Court, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. They treated him badly. They treated him badly. What the radical Democrats did to Justice Kavanaugh and his wonderful family is a national disgrace. And don't forget it on November 6th. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. The Democrats have become an angry, unhinged mob determined to get power by any means necessary. Your vote in this election will decide which party controls Congress. And I will tell you, they're all talking about Arizona, and they're talking about Martha McSally. They're all talking about Arizona. The choice for every American could not be more clear than it is right now. Democrats produce mobs, Republicans produce jobs. So this November, when you're voting, vote for the jobs, not for the mobs. Just do it. Just do it.
You know, it's all very fragile. It can end very quickly. Even Supreme Court, we picked two, Kavanaugh and Gorsuch. Two. Many presidents never pick any. They never get that great opportunity. They say it's the most important decision you can make. I would say war and peace is the most, but I would say it's second. But it's a great honor to have picked two great people. And you know what? We can pick others before it's over and before even the first term, although we'll have eight years instead of four years, based on everything I see. Based on the competition that we see, you know, we can no longer say Pocahontas because she has no Indian blood. We can no longer call her Pocahontas. I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll have to come up with another name for her. Elizabeth Warren, a very boring name. We're going to have to come up with another name. I can't use the word Pocahontas anymore. There's no Indian blood. I always said, I have more Indian blood than she has, and I have none. I have none. But it's more than she has. I don't know. We'll have to come up with another name. If Nancy Pelosi or crying Chuck Schumer and the radical Democrats take control of Congress on November 6th, they will try to plunge our country into a nightmare of gridlock, poverty, and chaos. You know that. It's going to be a mess. Democrats want to raise your taxes, impose socialism on our country, turn us into a Venezuela, turn us into another Venezuela, take away your health care, destroy your Second Amendment, and Democrats want to throw your borders wide open to deadly drugs and ruthless gangs. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. We are. The wall is under construction. We're building the wall. 1.6 billion, another 1.6 billion, another 1.6 billion. I want to build it all at one time. We can do it in one year. And you see what's happening. Right now, as you know, Mexico is on their southern border, their southern border. And they're fighting. And they're fighting some bad people in that group. You know, you see the people come up and you listen to the fake news back there and you think they're all... You think they're all wonderful people, right? No, no, you think, I'm serious. You think they're all wonderful people. You got some bad people in those groups. You got some tough people in those groups. And I'll tell you what, this country doesn't want them, okay? We don't want them. Democrats have become the party of crime. It will be the election of Kavanaugh, the caravan, law and order, tax cuts. We forget about tax cuts all the time. And common sense. But we forget about tax cuts. We gave you the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. And I tell friends of mine that are running for office, we got to stop bringing up tax cuts. It's almost like, yeah, that's a, we just did it. And we also got rid of the individual mandate, the most unpopular thing, where you have the privilege of paying a fortune for having a second privilege of getting bad health care also for a fortune. No, that's no good. We got rid of the individual mandate. You know another thing we did for, I like a lot of people in Arizona, small businesses, farmers, you don't have a state tax, no more state tax. So if you love your children, which is a question, you may not like them, in which case don't listen to them. If you don't like them, don't leave them the farm. But if you love them, you'll love Trump because you don't have to pay a state tax, okay? That's a big thing. There's so many things we don't have time to talk about them all. We've got a lot for you. The Demo I love you too. Thank you. 
Thank you. I love you too. The Democrat Party has become too extreme and too dangerous to be trusted with power. If you want to drain the swamp, you must defeat the Democrats. You have to do it. So voting has already begun in Arizona. Many of you already have your ballots. Return them today. Return them tomorrow. Go ahead. Get them in. Vote early. It's all right. But you have to vote on November 6th. And by the way, the early voting shows that Martha is pretty much ahead. We're way ahead of where we're going. It's early voting. Don't get complacent. Remember this. For whatever reason, the party that wins the presidency almost always loses in the midterm. I don't know what that's all about. No, they get complacent. Not here, right? So here's the difference we have. We probably have the greatest economy in the history of our country. So, so why would you, why would we lose? And just don't be complacent, okay? Don't be. And then what happens, you go on, and what happens often? So they lose the midterm, and then they go on to crush in 2020, in the next presidential. I want to win this, and then I win that. Tonight, we're thrilled to be joined by several really terrific Arizona Republicans, including Representatives Debbie Lesko. Debbie, where is that? Where is she? Good, Debbie. Did a good job. Debbie was very tough. She did a good job. Thank you, Debbie. Great job, Debbie. A man who has been in there, and he has been fighting for me day in and day out. He's a winner. He loves his state. He loves his country. I watched him this morning. I heard him. I heard he was on. So I wanted to turn on, and I wanted to watch Congressman Andy Biggs, and he did a great job. Thank you, Andy. Great job. And a man that we all love, and he's solid, and he helped us with health care, and he helped us with every single aspect of what we're doing, tax cuts, borders. He's tough, he's smart, and you love him, Dave Schweikert. Dave. Thank you, Dave. Great job. We're also honored to be joined by your fantastic governor and friend of mine, Doug Ducey. And don't worry about it, Doug. That's do, do. Just, that's not. It is, too. That's pretty impressive when you get. Doug is fantastic. And get out and vote for Doug, by the way. Get out and vote. He's great. He's doing a great job. He loves the state, loves the country. Finally, it is my great honor to introduce a true American patriot, a person I've gotten to know very well over the last two years. She was always there for us, and she's tough, and she's smart, and she's brave, and she can fly an airplane better than anybody. Your next United States Senator from Arizona, Martha McSally. Come up, Martha. President Trump, thank you for coming to Arizona. And I just wanted to let you know, we are not crazy here. <laughs> and unlike what my opponent says, we are not a meth lab of democracy. Is that ridiculous? Arizona is an amazing state, and I'm really, really glad you're here. I'm so grateful for your support. Look, America is back, and Arizona is back. 
thanks to the leadership of President Trump and Doug Ducey and the Republican Senate and House. <laughs> we see so much optimism. We have so many job opportunities. We are rebuilding our military and supporting our troops. But, and we have Justice Brett Kavanaugh on the bench. But there is so much more to do, and there are so high stakes in this election. And we are down to the wire to make sure that we keep and grow the Senate majority. Think about it. The contrast could not be more clear. I said I would vote for Kavanaugh. Cinema said she would vote no. Right? Right? On national security, I advocated and we fought and kept the A-10 warthog. And cinema, cinema advocated to shut down Luke Air Force Base. Ooh. We just were visiting at Luke Air Force Base, so you could see what a treasure that is. I was shooting at the Taliban, and cinema says it's okay for an American to join the Taliban. What the hell? Right? And I was wearing a flight suit, and she was wearing a pink tutu. <laughs> And on economic security, you know, I voted for your tax cuts and cinema voted no. And most importantly for us on border security, President Trump, it has been an honor to be leading in the House to make sure we build the wall. Exactly. We have to do it. We got to close these crazy loopholes. And my legislation, working with you, closes these loopholes. We have so much more to do. My opponent and her allies, Chuck Schumer, they are so dangerous on these issues. Cinema voted to protect sanctuary cities. Yeah. And look, this is personal. In the audience tonight is Mary Ann Mendoza and her son, Brian. Her son, Brian, a Mesa sergeant in the Mesa Police Department, was killed by a man who didn't belong being here and should have been gone. And this is personal for Marianne. This is personal for us in Arizona. We have to crack down on sanctuary cities, MS-13 gangs, build the wall, and secure the border. So there's so much at stake. There's so much at stake. And so I'm grateful for your support. I'm grateful for your vote. God bless you all. God bless Arizona. God bless America. Thank you. That's fantastic. Martha's a veteran, a great veteran, a great fighter, a warrior, and the first female fighter pilot to fly combat missions in American history. Think of that. She's the first. And I spoke to some of the pilots and fighters just now. We just left. We had an incredible display of talent. Boeing was there, and Raytheon was there, and they were all there. Every, everybody was there. And the ones that know Martha, they said she could fly her plane like nobody. I like that. That's good. That's good. They were very impressed. They were very impressed. You deserve a senator who truly loves your state and loves to fight for this state and who will never let you down. And that leader is indeed Martha McSally. And Martha's opponent is a far left extremist named Kirsten Cinema, And you know, she is. She's being protected by the fake news back there. She's being... Boy, that's a lot. Look at all the people. It's like the Academy Awards. Look at this. That's a lot of stuff. You think this happens to the average president? No way. And every single time, I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Uh, you can turn the cameras back on. I won't say anything bad, I promise. 
Now, when they think I'm ready to say something bad, all those red lights go off. You know, just... Now, turn them. I'm not going to... I'm going to leave you alone. After 9-11, Martha McSally heroically led airstrikes against radical Islamic terrorists. Very successful. But while Martha was bravely fighting the Taliban, Kirsten Sinema said she had no problems with Americans defecting from our country to join the Taliban. How does that happen? Seriously, how does that happen in Arizona? Explain that one to me. Cinema made these comments even as courageous American service members were giving their lives in the fight against enemy Taliban forces. Kirsten Cinema also embraced a left-wing radical who was convicted of providing material support to terrorists. This is what you want as your senator? I don't think so. I don't think so. And as you know, and as you just heard, Kirsten Sinema voted strongly against tax cuts. Now, not because she believes that, but because Nancy Pelosi told her to do it. That's all it is. Nancy Pelosi doesn't do it. And Maxine Waters told her to do it, too. It's true. I, she doesn't believe that, but they told her to do it. They'll do, she'll do whatever they tell her. She voted for Obama's amnesty, and she voted against the border wall. She wants to let poisonous drugs pour into your communities, and that's where they're coming, right through. Cinema voted to support deadly sanctuary cities, and Cinema joined the shameful Democrat mob attacking the great Justice Brett Kavanaugh. He will be great. He'll be a great Supreme Court justice. And a vote for Kirsten Cinema is a wasted vote, but more importantly, it's a dangerous vote because it's for Schumer, Brian Chuck, for Pelosi, and for Maxine Waters. If you don't want radical Democratic mob to control Congress, vote today. Get out and vote before the city. You don't have to wait. Vote for Martha McSally. It'll be one of the best votes you've ever cast. It will be. It will be the second greatest vote you ever cast. The first greatest vote was for me. Me. Now, when you cast a vote for me, you cast the vote for you, too. It's us. Because we have, and they never question me on this, I say it all the time, we have the greatest movement in the history of our country. It's never happened. It's never happened before. And we're doing great, the greatest president. Thank you. I like him. But look, who said that? Thank you, man. Thank you. We're working hard. We're working hard. Democrats in Congress have already signed up for a socialist takeover of health care that would eliminate the private health insurance of 3.4 million Arizona residents. You know about that. And it's going to destroy our country and your taxes will be tripled. The Democrat plan would destroy Medicare and terminate Medicare Advantage for over a half a million Arizona seniors who depend on it. Democrats plan to kill Medicare Advantage is especially unfair to Hispanic Americans, of which we have a couple in the room, right? Couple. We're doing very well with Hispanic Americans. Doing very well. Because you know what? They want safety at the border. They want great jobs. Remember the last election? Well, he won't do too well with the Hispanic vote. Did we do well or what? They're still, they're still, they're still trying to figure it out. And remember they said, oh, but he won't do well with women. Did we do well with women? We did well with women. They haven't figured it out yet, they're, but they're trying. Are you trying? Do you continue or do you just want to play this game? Do you want to keep playing this game? One out of every two Hispanic seniors is enrolled in Medicare Advantage, which they're going to destroy. Republicans want to protect Medicare for our great seniors who have earned it and they paid for it. And Republicans will always protect patients with pre 
existing conditions. They're trying to put a false narrative out there. And if there is a Republican out there that doesn't, let me know. I'll believe me, him or her, we'll talk him into it. We're going to protect pre existing conditions. Just put it down and back. Remember during the debates, everyone wanted to readjust your Social Security. Let's add some years on. Let's say, who was the one person that said, I'm not touching entitlements? Thank you. Thank you. And remember I said, right? And I haven't. I haven't. There's been a lot of presidents that made big promises. All of a sudden, their career is over. You know, you know a few of them. You've watched it. And it's not a pretty sight when it happens. It's not pretty at all. Not going to happen to me. But I was on stage during all those debates, which we won, by the way, every single one of them. But I was on stage with all those debates, first with some really fine people, the Republicans, and then with a very dishonest person, crooked Hillary Clinton. And during that time, and during... It is amazing how you can delete 33,000 emails after getting a subpoena from the United States Congress and our Justice Department doesn't do anything about it. It is pretty amazing. Our Justice Department, headed by many people from the Obama administration. Can't win them all, but it'll all work out, folks. It'll all work out. Just like you look at what we've done, you look at every department, you look at what's going on, Secretary of State, you look at EPA, you look at everyone. We are doing so well, we are really hitting. The new platform of the Democrat Party is radical socialism and open borders. As we speak, the Democrat Party is openly inviting millions of illegal aliens to break our laws, violate our borders, and overwhelm our nation. Other than that, the Democrats are doing a great job, right? <laughs> Not too good. You know what? They're lousy politicians. They have horrible policy. They do one thing well. They stick together. They really do. They stick together better than the Republicans. The one thing they do and they stick. They don't want us to have the victory of a wall, even though we got much more money for our military. Many, many times more. We got money, but they don't want us to have the wall, even though they know it's the right thing. They will fight to the death because they don't want us to have the wall, but we've started the wall anyway, and we're going to get that done. We're going to get it done. And now it's as a point, when you look, it's really at a point, when you look at what's pouring over in these caravans, when they start saying, we don't want to change those immigration laws that are so bad, catch and release, we don't want to change visa lottery. Think of visa lottery. They pick names out of a hat. Visa lottery, think about it. Do you think that this country, or whichever country it is, are they going to put you, are they going to put their finest in there? I don't think so. I don't think so. Chain migration, you come over and then they have, we had a guy on the West Side Highway. He goes down the highway, he's going 60, 70 miles an hour, radical Islam, terrible. Makes a right turn into a park, kills nine people, badly injures that nobody ever talks about. People that are running along the beautiful Hudson River because they want to stay in shape, they end up going home six months later with no legs, with no arms, because of people like this, sick people, these are sick people. And they's allowed, this guy had 22 people. He brought in his mother, his father, his brother, his sisters, his aunts, his uncles. Because of Democrats' policy. That's called chain migration. It's a chain. Sounds so good. Like right out of, like right out of school. Sounds so beautiful. The chain. Everyone comes together. Nope. We're ending it, folks.
And the Democrats don't want to do it, but we're ending it, folks. And catch and release. How about that? That's my favorite. Catch. You catch a damn killer. You catch a bad hombre. You catch a bad one. You take the name. And we're supposed to bring them to court. But we have hundreds of thousands of people, and it's all my fault. You know why? Because we, I, you, all together, we've made this country so strong economically, so good, jobs, everything, that everybody wants to come in. So it's my fault. But you know what? We're not letting them in. We only are going to let people in based on merit. We need people to come in based on merit. So you have catch and release. They put one foot. They don't need to. One foot. We have the greatest people. ICE, Border Patrol, law enforcement. And the law doesn't allow us to throw them the hell out. We have to take them. We have to write them up. And then we say, come back in three years for a court case. In the meantime, they're released into our society. And you know what the percentage of people that come back for the case? 3%. No, you're wrong. He said zero. You were slightly off. 3%. 3% show up three years, four years, five years later. It's a disgrace. And the Democrats do it. And we don't have enough votes. We don't have enough Republicans to override their negative vote because they do stick together. And remember this. They're only sticking together because they want to make sure that I and we don't get what they know our country needs. But I think they may be forced politically to do it, because I got to tell you, anybody that votes for a Democrat now is crazy. When you look at what's coming up, crazy. Got to be crazy. The Democrats don't care about what their extremist immigration agenda will do to your communities, your hospitals. How about your hospitals? They're being overrun. Your schools. California, they want to give you free education, free health care, open borders. I mean, we're going to have 10 million people move to California. This is the craziest thing. So here's what we do. Let's get these people out of there. There's something wrong. They're cuckoo. The Democrats don't care that a flood of illegal immigration is going to totally bankrupt our country because all the Democrats want is power. And don't forget, everybody that comes across the border, for the most part, they're going to vote Democrat. They're not voting Republican. They're going to vote Democrat. So nobody said they're stupid, but it's bad for our country. But they're going to vote Democrat. No matter what we do, they will be voting Democrat. And they understand that. That's why Democrats support programs like catch and release. That's why Democrats want to give illegal aliens free welfare, free health care, and free education. Give them a driver's license. Give them a driver's license. Next thing you know, they'll want to buy them a car. Then they'll say the car's not good enough. We want, how about a Rolls Royce? Give a, we want a Rolls Royce. Made not in America, so therefore I hope that's not what we do. That's why Democrats want to give illegal immigrants the right to vote. How about in California, where illegal immigrants took over the town council, and now the town council is run by illegal immigrants in a town? I mean, is this even believable? You tell this stuff. It is sick. That's why Democrats want to abolish ICE, the most brave people. These people, I wouldn't want their job. Nobody up here wants their job, I can tell by looking. They go into the toughest situations. We call them nests. Nests are very bad people. They don't like using guns. They'd much rather use knives because it's much more painful and slower. These are really bad people. And ICE goes in there, and it's like a day at the office. No problem. And they free towns, like in Long Island. They liberate towns. It's like liberation from a war. They liberate towns. And the Democrats think that ICE isn't nice. We have to get rid of ICE. 
We cherish ICE, and we cherish Border Patrol, and we cherish our law enforcement. The casualties in the Democrats' open borders crusade are innocent American families and lives. And we have some of these incredible people with us tonight. Democrat immigration policies allow poisonous drugs, vicious gang members, and MS-13 killers to pour into our country. And we've done a great job. We have removed thousands of MS-13. Get them the hell out. Thousands, thousands and thousands. And Democrat sanctuary cities release dangerous predators out of a jail and straight into your communities. This is not what you want. I know the people of Arizona. You don't want You don't want it. A Democrat victory in November would be a bright, flashing invitation to every trafficker, smuggler, drug dealer, and illegal alien on the planet. Come on in. Come on in, folks. A Republican victory would send the message that America will enforce our borders and defend our citizens. It's important. This is your choice in November. This is your real choice. I don't think personally, I don't think you have a choice, but what am I? How can I say that? You're supposed to vote. I don't think you have a choice, okay? I know the people in this room too well. Democrats believe illegal border crossers should be immediately set free. Republicans believe illegal border crossers should be immediately sent home or, if they're criminals, put in jail. <laughs> Democrats believe our country should be a giant sanctuary city for criminal aliens. They want it to be a big, fat, beautiful sanctuary city, the whole country, for criminal aliens. Republicans believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans. <laughs> Democrats believe American taxpayers should provide free welfare to illegals. That's wonderful. How about California? They owe two million trillion dollars. They owe more money than any place has ever even dreamt of. And now they have a man running for governor who wants to actually let the entire world pour into a state, give them free welfare, free education, free licenses, free everything. And they have no money. And they have no money and they owe a fortune. Other than that, it's a great idea. Republicans believe welfare should be protected for truly needy Americans that need it. If you want to save your country, if you want to protect your family, if you want to defend American laws, the borders, the sovereignty, the dignity, then you must vote for Martha and vote for Republican on November 6th or before. This election is also about prosperity. In less than two years, we have created over 4.2 million new jobs and lifted over 4 million Americans off of food stamps. Think of that. Hispanic American household income is at an all-time high. Who is a Hispanic American in this room? 10%. It's all right. Do you like Trump? It's always dangerous. <laughs> always dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Hispanic American poverty has reached an all-time historic low. Hispanic American unemployment has reached its lowest rate ever recorded in history. African American and Asian American unemployment have reached their lowest rates ever recorded in the history of our country. 
And women's unemployment at 3.6% is the lowest it's been in 65 years. Every day we are living by our motto, promises made, promises kept. And some of the fake news, and they know, they say that I made promises and I actually kept more promises than I made. I think we've done more than we've even said. And we're not finished. We're not finished yet. We're not finished. Two weeks ago, I announced that we are replacing the horrible, disgusting, terrible, terrible NAFTA deal with an incredible brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. The USMCA, all done. Great deal. Got to be approved by Congress, but even the Democrats like it. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? Chuck Schumer actually said really good things about it. Can you believe it? It'll be approved pretty quickly, and that it opens up Canada and Mexico to the farmers and to manufacturers. It's a great thing for hopefully all three countries, but this is going to be a great deal. NAFTA was a disaster. We've taken the toughest ever action to crack down on China's highly abusive trade practices. And we're winning. We're winning. And Republicans passed the biggest package of tax cuts and tax reforms in American history, including Anwar in Alaska. They couldn't get it passed. The biggest site drilling, biggest site just about in the world, just about in the world. And President Reagan really tried. Great guy. Couldn't get it done. President Bush, all of them. And I got it done. I got it. Alaska. The people in Alaska like me. Well, my grandfather spent a lot of time in Alaska. He was looking for gold. Wasn't so easy to find, but he was looking. We also passed Veterans Choice for our great, great, great people. Giving our veterans the right to see a private doctor and the landmark VA accountability law to ensure anyone who mistreats or hurts our veterans in any way is accountable. We look at them and we say, Jim, sorry to do this. You're fired. Get your ass out of here. Couldn't fire them. You couldn't fire them. We were stuck. We secured $700 billion and then next year, $716 billion to fully rebuild our great American military. And our military will very shortly be far stronger, far more powerful, modern, the best in the world, and also its jobs. Now, when it comes to the military, I don't care about the job so much. I want the strong military. But as a secondary benefit, every ounce of it is built in the United States. And we make the best planes and the best ships and the best rockets and missiles. We make the best stuff. So it's a lot of jobs. And we will soon have far and away the strongest military that we've ever had. And hopefully, you know what? It'll be so strong and so powerful that we won't have to use it, okay? If it wasn't powerful, we probably would have to use it. That's the way life works. At my direction, the Pentagon is now working to create a sixth branch of the American Armed Forces called the Space Force. Very serious. Very serious. I withdrew the United States from the horrible one-sided Iran nuclear deal. I just said. And you remember, a day before I came into office, it looked like Iran was just going to take over the Middle East. There was no stopping them. Guess what? They're struggling right now. They're really struggling. They're having riots every weekend. They are struggling right now. They are having a hard time. And we've recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Together, we have made extraordinary progress. The progress that we've made is 
I think on parallel, certainly for the first two years. And you know, we're still quite a bit short. We have a ways to go. January 20th. We have a ways to go. But nobody has done more than we've done in the first two years and not even close. And we're just getting started. If you vote to elect a Republican House and a Republican Senate, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut your regulations, and raise your income. We will protect Medicare and Social Security. And Democrats will destroy them both, and you know it. We will continue to confirm judges who interpret our Constitution as written. We will secure the border. We will pass Kate's law. We will end sanctuary cities. Stop catch and release, visa lottery, chain migration out. And we will keep the criminals, drug dealers, and terrorists the hell out of our country. We will lift millions of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. For years you watched as your leaders apologized for America, right? Remember? Remember the bowing? All the bowing! People forget about the bowing. I remember. I didn't like it. All the bowing. Now you have a president who is standing up for America. We're standing up for your values. We're standing up for the people of Arizona. We are proudly standing up for our great national anthem. But to continue this incredible momentum, to defend your state and your country, I need you to get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, and get out and vote for Martha McSally, November 6th is the latest, but vote early. Martha's a courageous fighter. She's the person you need in Washington. You will be so proud of her. She loves this state so much. You will be, seriously, you will be so proud of her. A vote, thank you. <laughs> she said, I'm proud of you too. A vote, that's right. People always said, oh, this is gonna be an easy job. Nothing easy about it, folks. That's right. Nothing easy. But we love it. You know why we love it? They just asked me recently, do you like it? It's hard. I said, it's only hard because I choose to work 24 hours a day. I could make it easy. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. But you know why I love it? Because we are accomplishing so much far greater than anybody ever thought, including them. And they give us credit for it. They happen. They happen. A vote for a Republican Congress is a vote for more jobs, more wealth, and more products made right here in the USA. That's what we want. Remember? It's a vote to respect our laws and respect the heroes of law enforcement. And a vote for Republicans is a vote to reject the Democrat politics of hatred, anger, and division, and to celebrate the greatness and the glory of being an American. And it is. It's great and it's glorious. Loyal citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country, returning power to you, the American people, and that's happening. From Phoenix to Flagstaff, from Mesa to Yuma, to the Red Rocks of Sedona, this great state was settled by some of the toughest men and toughest and most beautiful women ever to walk the face of the earth. Now they're going to say tomorrow, 
He calls women beautiful. Isn't that terrible? It'll be Trump calls women beautiful. You're beautiful. You are beautiful. Beautiful. You always were and you always will be. That is funny. I'm thinking. I'm just watching this. I think we got him. I think we got him. I think we got him. You're beautiful. Arizona is where Wyatt Earp became a legend. Where the American West became the American dream. And where generations of farmers, ranchers, pioneers, and soldiers used their own two hands to build a life and to build a home. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. But they all had one thing in common. They loved their families. They loved their country. And they loved their God. These courageous Arizona patriots did not shed their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could sit at home while others tried to erase their legacy and destroy our proud American heritage. For the sake of our freedom and for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. We will not bend. We will not break. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never, ever, ever back down. We will never surrender. And we will always fight on to victory. Always. Because we are American and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We are one people one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the proud people of Arizona, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Arizona. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you very much for joining us and choosing us as your stream of choice. Like I put on the chat, YouTube completely demonetized this live stream right in the middle of it. Ridiculous. So if you'd like to help us out, the link is in the description below the video. Or you can go to paypal.me forward slash GST.